the Neol, a tale. Though parts of the book of the Neol may belong to the 3rd century BCE, the bulk of it was undoubtedly written during the Maccabean Rebellion in the 2nd century to encourage the Jews in their patriotic struggle. Well, um... It derives from stuff at least 1500 BCE, so maybe this version, more or less, was written in the 2nd century BCE, but, um, and it might be easier to find some of the figures if you're looking at that 1500 BCE period, because people are like, well, 500 BCE, and, or 600 BCE, or... 200, you know, we're not really finding um, dim stories of, an, of a legendary exilic prophet were woven together and supplemented by an allegorical account of latter history down to the contemporary period of Antiochus Epiphanes. The ending is an example of apocalyptic or revealed literature in which a hidden meaning is conveyed by the text to those initiated a most useful form in times of persecution. In the case of Daniel, the specific meaning was so well concealed that the origin of the work was soon forgotten. And as with Yuna, its authorship was ascribed to its central character. When writings circulated only in manuscript, it was, of course, the easiest thing in the world for utter confusion to arise as to the date of the original composition. Now, if we look at the New Testament, the canonical Gospels that they chose, 90 to 150 were when the first texts of them appear. And within, you'll see that these people weren't the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that, you know, could have known Jesus in any sense of the word, no matter which historical character you're looking at and saying, well, that, that was probably Jesus. Um, the Bible really kind of makes the point that four of them are, if you look at it, but um, others argue for whatever. But anyways, uh, the Song of the Three Children, which appears as a psalm of praise in the prayer book of the Church of England, is part of of the apocryphal version of Daniel. Daniel, a tale. In the third year of the reign of Yehuyakim, uh, Yehuyakim, king of Yehuda, came Nebuchadnezzar. There's a couple versions of that name, I think. Um, king of Babylon, into Jerusalem and besieged it. And God as noun and verb gave Yehuyakim, king of Yehuda, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of divinity, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of whom he considered to be his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of whom he considered to be his God. And the king spoke unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Yisrael out of the king's seed, out of the prince's children in whom was no blemish, but well-favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these that were the children of Yehuda, Daniel, Hananiah, is that a ch? ch uh, 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 Mishal and Azariah, to whom the priest 
of the eunuchs gave the names, for he gave unto Dungal the name of Belteshazzar, kind of like Lucifer, right? I mean, I don't mean Lucifer is like a devil, I mean the light burner sort of name. Um, Lord of Teshazzar, right? Um, and to Chananya of Shadrach, and to Mishal of Nisach, and to Azaria of Abednego. Again, Nego being the planet that's called Lucifer, Venus. So the indication of the greatness of Daniel in there. I mean, there's other characters we can make this point with, but uh, yeah. I mean, in the Bible elsewhere. Uh, but Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, divinity had brought Daniel in a favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall ye make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs hath set over to Daniel, Hananiah, and Mishal, and Azariah, prove thy servants. I beseech thee ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this manner, uh, in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Then Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink, and gave them pulse. As for these four children, divinity gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said that he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king commanded Uned with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Chananya, Mishal, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. I aren't quite sure about the spelling of those names. And in all matters, in all matters of wisdom and understanding, that the king inquired of them. He found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Kuresh. And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, whereupon his spirit was troubled. And a sleep broke from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, you know, the Kashti, the, the people who pray five times a day, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. Well, the, with the sacred thread, but yeah. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spoke the Chaldeans, the Kushtim, to the king in Syriac, O king, live forever.
Tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Kshtim, the thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if ye show the dream and the interpretation thereof, ye shall receive me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore show me the dreams and the interpretation thereof. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants my dreams, and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that ye will gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me. Till the time be changed, therefore tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye shall show me the interpretation thereof. The Kushtim answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king... There is no king, lord, nor ruler that acts such things at any magician or astrologer or Kachdim. So see, there's a difference between the um, people with a religion and people that are the soothsayers and making up their own rituals. And I, I don't know what the word magician really means there, but um, and it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king, except whom are considered to be gods, whose dwelling is not with flesh. Jinn, probably, I'm sure. Um, for this cause, the king was angry and very furious, and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decrees went forth, that the wise men should be slain, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. And then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said unto Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and answered and desired of the king, that he would give him time, and that he would show to the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house, and made the thing known to Chananya, Mishal, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of divinity, uh, of the divinity of heaven. Concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Therefore Daniel went in unto Ariok, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon, and bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Yehuda that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said unto Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king, and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers, axis controlling priests, I, I, I'm not sure which, what they're using here, um, Show unto the king, but there is a divinity in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. 
Thou, O king, sawest, and beheld a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay, and broke them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold, broken into pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the divinity of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold, and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh into pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise, and whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the divinity of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great divinity hath made it known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. The king answered Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a, a God of whom are considered be gods, and a Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal the secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man, and gave him many great gifts, and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon, and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, uh, uh, Meshach, and Abednego, over the affairs of the providence of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold, whose height was threescore cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura, in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces, to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king, set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together under the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar, the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, 
that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebu Tetnesser, the king, hath set up. And whoso faileth, falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, the languages, fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Kishtim came near and accused the Jews. They spoke and said unto the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image, and whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace, and that certain Jews whom thou set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men, O king, have not regarded thee, and uh, they serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast 